let's start with an overview of all the sensor systems in Highfleet. I'm in the ship editor and I open up the Sevastopol. You find the sensor systems under sensors over here and you have nine different items. Okay, let's start with radar as a sensor. First one is the MR700, which is a radar dish. And then you got the MR500. And the difference here is range, cost, and how much power they need. And it corresponds to your radar attribute over here, which is 750 kilometers. When placing a radar dish, it should be placed in the highest point on the ship and be as unobstructed as possible, like so. For example, if I take this radar over here, now the radar goes down to nine, nine, yeah, 393. Let's say I place it somewhere over here. Now I don't get the full 750 because it's obstructed. Also, the radar system doesn't stack. So, for example, if you take a second radar, put it over here. It will never go above 750 because that's the maximum you can get in this game. <clears throat> so the next sensor system is the uh, electronic intelligence. The short form for that is ELINT, which you can find over here, this attribute. And the Sevastopol is an ELINT rating of 1500 kilometers. And the next sensor system is the fire control radar. Now this system combines three different things. It combines uh, radar functionality, it combines tracking functionality, and guiding functionality. Radar is, as I just explained, um, it emits radar signals. And then you have tracking ability, which is basically what you can directly see on the, on the tactical on the tactical map. The next system is the MR12 fire control radar and the smaller version of it, the MR2M. The next sensor is the fire control radar. Now fire control radar has three different functions. It provides radar, provides tracking and guiding. Radar is, as, we, as I explained earlier, the same thing like a radar dish. However, it has a shorter range. Then you got tracking ability. Tracking in this game on the strategic map means how far you can directly see things. So for example, if something gets within your tracking radius, then you can see it move in real time as an icon. And then guiding means how many missiles the fire control system can control at the same time. Okay, the next sensor system is the IRST, which is infrared search and track. It is similar to a radar, however, it's a passively uh, functioning device. So for example, a radar, the way radar works is it sends out radar beams and the beams get reflected by things. And some of that, the radar um, dish catches back and you get a signal of what, it, what it's looking at. An IRST, infrared system, is passive, which means it, it just collects um, electromagnetic waves of the spectrum, which is infrared lights, which is generated by heat, such as thrusters and it cannot be detected by alien systems. However, there's a much shorter range than radar. And then we have JAMA, which is this system. And it's currently missing, I think, the, the real picture and the description over here. <coughs> JAMA, um, it basically provides capability to jam missiles so they miss you when they come flying at you. And the last item in this list is the radar, uh, sorry, radio antenna. And it's not covered by this guide because its only purpose is to be able to interact with the radio system in the game. Now there's two more important um, attributes, which are IR sign and RD sign, which I think means infrared signature and radar signature. Now I'm not entirely sure what the chance over here means, because a smaller ship have usually um, a higher chance for something. I'm not sure what that means, if it means some, some type of um, chance to not be detected? I'm not sure. Well, what I do know is that your infrared signature depends on how many thrusters you have on the ship. So for example, if I would remove one thruster from this, uh, from the Sevastopol, I would find one. I can see the infrared signature was reduced. And I think this um, has two functions in the game. From what distance the enemy can attack you when you're coming at them. For example, if you're attacking a city and you want to send in a smaller group in first so they don't get alerted, 
Usually you can't do it with a Sevastopol because it's such a big ship and it gets detected. And I think those two signatures um, play a part in that. And as for the radar signature, it depends on the basically in the, in the dimensions of your ship. If it would remove this entire superstructure on the top, it would reduce the radar signature of the ship. Also, if it would make the ship more narrow. Let's start with the tracking sensor system because it's the most intuitive one. Tracking is indicated by the yellow circle. And anything that crosses into the yellow circle will be visible in real time. So on a parked ship with radar off, distance is about 80 kilometers. And this is for the Sevastopol. Now if we turn on the radar system, tracking is bounds. Let's check the tracking with that. That's about 350, 340, um, 44 kilometers. Now, the radar system is also indicated here, but it, it's, um, they shouldn't be confused with each other because the tracking devices on the ship, they provide tracking and radar. So when you turn off the radar, you also lose a lot of tracking. However, they are different systems. <coughs> also, the ship is landed right now. Now, if I give it the movement order like this, taken off. I can see uh, the radar is even further expanded. Let's see what's happened to the tracking. Tracking also is now at 400. So to sum up uh, tracking, if you land it and your radar is off, it is very small. That's about 80 kilometers. If you land it and the radar is on, it's about 340. And if you're moving and the radar is on, it's about 400. Now if the radar is off while moving, then let's see how much it is. then it has no difference from when you land it or not. So tracking is the shortest range detector system in, and it gives you the most accurate information about your target. For this demonstration, I provoked an enemy strike force to come down from the north to the city. Then I parked my fleet over here and turned off my radar systems. An infrared system is this device over here. If this light is blinking, it picked up a signal. And for this sensor, a signal is a heat signature emitted by rockets or by ships. And the hotter it is, or the more of them are in the area, the stronger the signal will be. And the, the green indicator shows a little spike over here. Now you can scroll it over here. And if you switch to real time and the signal is really close, like from a missile, then you can see a pattern over here. And this corresponds to this cone. So if it's closer to this line, it's closer to you over here. It's just a different um, projection of the, of the same bracket over here. Now let's check out the range. The range of my fleet for infrared detection is about 400, I think, or 300 something uh, kilometers over here. So now I know that something is over here and it's within this area. Now the advantages of this system is, the first one is that it, it's a, it is not an active system like a radar, it's passively just um, detecting signals. In this case, it's detecting infrared electromagnetic waves from something. And it's also a really precise system. It gives you a pretty precise one or two degree angle on where the signal is coming from. Now the, the key advantage of that is, if you're like in an ambush position like this, you could take missiles right now, fire it in that direction and they should find the target and the enemy will have a really hard time finding you because you don't have a radar system on which means you're much harder to detect so let's try that right now and to take a missile I'm going to point it to 330 about uh, should be about here Push one. Push one over here One over here, and let's see what happens. I can see the spike over here. That's from our missile. Yeah. You can see it changed course, which means it found something over here. 
<clears throat> and this is how we use the infrared system. Now let's take a look at the radar system and the alien system. I'm going to explain them together because they interact with each other in different ways. And I'm going to explain the alien first because then a few things on the radar might make more sense. So the alien system is over here, which is also called the radar warning receiver. This is a passive system that detects radar beams emitted from an active radar. So the way it works is that the radar system sends out radar beams, and if they hit objects, they get reflected back, and some of the beams make it back to the um, to the dish, and then the the radar system can interpret the data and identify targets. What the radar warning receiver does, it alerts a ship that it is being looked at by a radar. However, picking up radar signals with the radar warning receiver does not mean that the enemy radar actually has found you because the alien range is about 1500 kilometers maximum in this game and the maximum radar range is 750 which is half of it and this can be explained um, for example if the radar system sends out the, the radar beams however what is coming back to the radar operator isn't good enough to identify targets however it is good enough for the radar warning receiver to pick up and notice that it's being looked at by something. Which means the radar warning receiver might detect an active radar before the active radar uh, detects what it is looking at. So now let me explain the, the alien system, how it works over here. Okay, the outer ring is orientation degrees from 0 to 360. And the yellow bars um, indicate the signal strength. In real life, it, uh, it could mean that the the source of the radar is really close or really strong. And in real life, those can be two different things. However, I'm not sure if that's modeled in the game. So in this case, uh, the alien level is a 2, which means alien 2. It's from 1, 2, 3, 4, and then alien danger. That means it's very close. And then danger close starts blinking. Then it's a really close proximity. <coughs> Now, what can you do with the radar warning receiver information? And what's the, I would say, the, what's the advantage towards the active radar system? The advantage is it's a passive system, as I explained earlier, which means the enemy doesn't get, um, doesn't, doesn't detect you because you're using it, because it's entirely passive. And the system gives you a rather coarse information where the radar is coming from. In this case, it's from the zero degree bracket, and that's a 60 degree cone over here which is a rather imprecise measurement. So for example, 60 degrees, if it's really close, 60 degrees might be not much ground to cover, but the further away you get, it gets really wide. So that type of information might be good enough if you send out the anti-radiation missile volley in a, wide, in a wide cone, then you might actually hit the target. And also that's what anti-radiation missiles are for in this game. Um, they home into active radar sources. So that's the, the purpose of that machine. Also, the secondary purpose is it can help you avoid danger. So if a strike group is cruising nearby and you, you can't afford fighting it, then this gives you an indication where it is. And if it has an active radar, it's likely looking for a fight. And now let me explain the active radar system. That's the most complicated one. OK. <clears throat> it's this device over here. First, I'll explain the buttons. Okay, first you got the ground switch on and off. I have a switch on the radar so you can see it. If you set it to ground, then it, uh, you can use it to detect hidden cities. However, that's not going to get covered in this guide. So I'm gonna switch back. And you switch it on and off with the infinity button. So turn it off, it stops. Turn it on again, then it's on. If you press on the one, then it does one sweep and stops. This is used if you just want to get one update without keeping it uh, continuously running. And you can also set it to sector search on, if you can on, I guess, the sector. Then you can concentrate the beam to stay within that bracket. It doesn't give you extra range, it only gives you a faster update in a smaller 
the bracket of the area. And here's how the range is on this on the radar system. So if the radar is on, then this um, circle indicates the detection range of your radar. It says radar here. It's closely linked um, to the tracking. They're, they're closely related depending on how fast you're flying and other factors, but they're not the same thing. So for example, the radar is like this. The range is about, let's measure it. Here is about 360 kilometers. Now if I'm taking off. Now I'm at eight kilometers altitude. That's the cruising altitude for most ships. Now you see the radar expanded, but the tracking remained relatively small. Let's take a look again. That's about seven, uh, 680 kilometers. Okay, so how does this targeting information work? If anything gets into that circle, it is going to show up as a target over here. Let's see if I can find a target. Let's fly a bit further like this. So now we found a target on the radar. So what can we do with that information now? You can see it's over here. And the length of the signal is about a 10 degree cone which is a much more precise um, direction than the 60 degree cone you get from the radar warning receiver. Also, if it's on the radar, you know it is within a 10 degree cone, around 15 degrees, and it has to be somewhere in here, because if it would be in the yellow circle, you would see it, and if it would be outside of that, you would not see it at all on the radar. So now you know you got a target that is somewhere here in a 10 degree cone. Now, can you do with that information? You can use missiles, or attack it directly, or if you have an aircraft carrier, you can send planes towards it. Let's see how jamming works. If one of your ships in your fleet has a jammer equipped, then you can use this button over here to jam incoming missiles. So if you click on, now one out of two things can happen. If it's a missile with a normal radar homing um, tracking system. Then it will fly past you, get jammed, and lose, lose track of you. However, if it is an anti-radiation missile, then it will go straight at you and the jammer is not going to work. So let's see what type of missile this is going to be. Uh, you can see it says jammed. However, it changed course directly onto me, which means that's an anti-radiation missile. And in this case, the jammer is not going to help you. Also, the manual actually mentions if you have a jammer on, then you increase the range, uh, the visibility to enemy alien systems, enemy radar warning receivers, and you will be easier to find. I think this concludes the guide and as always, thanks for watching.